guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited. And big thanks to T and the rest of the management and staff here at Toyota of Tampa Bay for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for T. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Grand Highlander is Toyota's all new full size three row crossover SUV released this year for 2024. Positioned between the smaller mid-size Highlander and the larger and more rugged body-on-frame Sequoia. Available in four different trim levels and three power plants, starting with the $43,000 base XLE, which is only available with the new 2.4-liter turbo four-cylinder, which cranks out a beefy 265 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, enough to get the Grand Highlander to 60 in the 7 to mid-7 second range all the way up to the $58,000 Hybrid Max Platinum, which has a top of the line Hybrid Max power plant cranking out a beefy 362 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, enough to get the Grand Highlander to 60 in about six seconds, if not quicker. There's also a more docile hybrid available for the XLE and Limited, which cranks out a pretty mediocre 243 horsepower, 175 pound-feet of torque, but here we have the Limited. With the regular turbo 2.4 liter with a base price of 48,000 bucks, what else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So of course, ground up, all new vehicle. We have full LED headlamps, LED daytime running light, LED fog light too. Toyota badge housing your van. Safety features, subtle chrome strip for the nose. Reminds me a little bit of a Toyota Crown, but the bottom of the grill area reminds me a lot of the new updated Sequoia. It's going to rain really hard here very shortly. I'm trying to rush my way through this review as quickly as possible. But hopefully you get a good idea of the front styling, the front facing camera as well. The wheel and tire setup, we get these smoked silver 20 inch rims wrapped in Yokohama Geolander XCV all season tires. Dimensions being 255-55 R20. So the 55 series sidewall should really help the ride quality with this beefy SUV. And the 255 should put the power down with no problem. A little bit of plastic cladding, but not a big deal with this black paint color. We have an additional camera to help us out with 360, LED turn signals, body color mirrors, and blind spot monitoring on the glass heated mirrors. We get a little bit of chrome trim for the bottom part of this window trim, all blacked out on top, and an aluminum looking roof rail with a large panoramic moonroof. We get smart access for all four doors, same rear wheel and tire setup. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper. The gas cap is not pushed to open. I'll show you where the latch is inside. Out rear, we have parking sensing, all wheel drive badge, LED taillights, turn signals, and reverse lights, blacked out Grand Highlander badge, limited in the opposite corner. We can get a good look at the exhaust tips. We do get a dual exhaust. And speaking of dual exhaust, Let's fire up this 2.4 liter four cylinder and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the all new 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder sold by Toyota for the 2024 Grand Highlander. And it sounds okay. It makes a pretty healthy amount of power for a four cylinder at 265 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, enough to average 22 MPGs, I believe. We'll take a quick look at the window sticker in one second and get this vehicle to 60. The low to mid seven second range, so definitely not a slouch and a very efficient power plant for a large, spacious SUV. We don't get hydraulic struts, unfortunately, but not a big deal. The hood is actually not very heavy at all. We'll take a quick look at the window sticker before checking out the interior of this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander four-wheel drive limited. The base price of 49,460 bucks. You guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features and options, totaling us out at 55,681 after all options and features. 22 combined MPGs, 20 in the city, 26 on the highway. Before the rain starts really pouring down, it hasn't actually started yet. It may for real blow past us, knock on car, but yeah. Taking a step inside before it pours, up top we get soft touch materials, wood trim beneath that, two person memory seats, gushy soft leather in the center, a little bit of hard plastic separating the two. Aluminum door handle, four window auto one touch, power folding mirrors, four way adjustable and some felt for the storage. Gushy soft leather armrest too, hard plastic down below but large 
storage pocket. You'll fit a foot long with no problem and a 30 ounce water bottle to wash it down. Pretty solid sound system too. We get the Grand Highlander aluminum nameplate as we step inside. Gushy, soft, typical Toyota seats, very comfortable. Not the sportiest buckets, but that's not why you buy a Grand Highlander. These, however, are very soft and comfortable, especially for long trips. Fully adjustable too. We get lumbar, you can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. But taking a step inside, looks like we avoided the rain. We can really check it out. So really quiet interior, we seriously isolated us from that active thunder. We can step on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. But first thing you notice, not a whole lot is different compared to the regular Highlander from 2023 outside of the touchscreen and full digital gauge display. These are big differences. The climate, however, is still hard buttons. Huge thumbs up to Toyota for that. We get heated and ventilated seats. The TAC goes to about 6,200 RPM, 160 mile an hour speedometer. The steering wheel is pretty thick, not the thickest, but we get 10 and two bolstering notch and a really nice area for the nine and three. The horn area is rubberized, the horn itself, loud and aggressive. People should be definitely getting out of your way. We'll do a window check. We do get dual panes here on the Grand Highlander. We have volume controls in the left side, skip on the right, radar cruise control, adjustments in the center, and our AM, FM, and Sirius. You can hang up and answer your phone calls, voice commands, and adjust the infotainment. Speaking of infotainment adjustments, here we have our average MPG and drive info. It takes a second. Here we have our drive mode and the trip data right back to where we started. We have a digital speedo up top, temperature outside, and time. Nice digital display. It's about 12.3 inches we have some leather stitching for the dashboard itself wood trim beneath that the stocks have a really satisfying click to them auto headlamps daytime running lights and fog light adjustments we also have auto rain sensing wipers that's a thumbs up for a sub fifty thousand dollar base price auto high beams heated steering wheel and the trunk release we have our gas cap release in the corner right next to the hood latch release and hopefully you can get a good look at the pedals with the floor mounted accelerator pedal the dashboard however is all hard plastic but that's not a thumbs down for me because you're never going to be touching the actual dashboard as opposed to the upper part of the door panel which we have as a soft touch trim we mentioned the touch screen i believe it's also 12.3 inches i'll leave a link right here to show you if i'm wrong i don't believe we can really adjust it because you have to put your phone number in. Personally, I'd rather let the potential owner of this vehicle do all of that. See, we can't even check out the map. But we still get music, phone call information beneath that, vehicle information, climate, trip information, and vehicle alert can all be adjusted, and the overall settings right down below. My personal favorite would just be this home screen. We're not gonna get it started, but it is a very nice touch screen once it is set up. We mentioned the hard buttons for the climate control, heated and ventilated seats, air vents beneath that, hazards in the center. You press this button in the corner and you can see everything that's going on surrounding your 2024 Highlander. That's a nice feature. You press this button one more time and it returns us to the home screen. USB-C port, an additional one to the right of it. We have some leather stitch trim for where our knee will often hit. Wireless charging pad and it appears that we actually have two. I haven't seen many vehicles with two wireless charging pads. This thing to the left may just be a grip for a phone, but it's still a very good use of space. The gear selector controls, the eight speed automatic transmission. We can take a quick look at the backup camera, really high resolution guidance lines and trajectory with a 360. We can see if we have any different views, a little wider of a view, and you can turn off the guidance lines and trajectory if you'd like to for one reason or another. That's about it. Throwing right back into park. It immediately throws us right back to the home screen. We have manual shift controls on the gear selector and the improper directions. If you don't want to use them, we don't have paddle shifters, so tough luck. We have electronic parking brake with brake hold right next to it. You can turn off the auto engine start stop, turn off the traction control and the drive mode select. So we not only have normal mode, sport mode and eco mode, we also have mud and sand and rock and dirt. Snow mode to the right of it with hill descent control. Two cup holders, you'll fit 24 ounce bottle in this first one, maybe a 30 ounce bottle in this large one up front and additional storage, nice for a wallet or a phone. The armrest is pretty soft leather trim with an additional padded area for this opening section and a pretty large overall console. I wish these side pieces opened up too to make the opening itself larger, but it's large. You'll fit probably around six, maybe seven, two liter bottles of soda in there. This second tier will probably get in the way, but it is of course removable. We can shut it right up, check out the glove box, pull this latch, it is damped. Not lined with felt, but it's decently large. You'll fit 20-ish license plates in there. You'll fit a pair of shoes with no problem and an additional faux glove box area right above outlined in some wood trim. USB-C port right next to it, all leather stitch trim for the bottom part of this dashboard. Frameless auto dimming rear view mirror with three garage home link settings on it. 
The interior lights back here are LED. You can turn on all the door lights when the door is open. You can open up the shade with the click of a button. You press and hold for a second and it does so automatically. It is really cloudy. I don't know if the rain's gonna really get us as he seats a little bit to the right of us, but I don't wanna speak too soon. Opening up this roof, hopefully this doesn't initiate the storm. But it opens up pretty quickly. We'll see how far it goes. Pretty far out already. See if it goes any further. It does not. But all the way to the end of the front row, we can poke our way out of here. It's a hot one today in Tampa and it's about to downpour at least somewhere. Hopefully not on us. We can shut this glass right up. We'll leave the shade open so when we hop out back, you can see how much light is brought into the cabin. But that's about it for the inside or at least the front row of this 2024 Grand Highlander limited let's take a step out back see how much space is offered back here as well as the overall quality of the material so we get the sunshade soft touch up top that's nice hard plastic separating the second tier of leather which is gushy soft more felt auto one touch additional storage up top and a massive storage compartment down below you're going to be able to stack up probably four foot longs in this compartment really large for a back seat the kids will definitely appreciate the back of this grand highlander we get some plastic floorboards or floor areas so when you hop out to the third row you don't muddy up this carpet and that legroom looks absolutely ludicrous taking a step inside i'm a little bit over six feet tall and i still have about a foot of knee room headroom i have about um, an inch maybe two so if you're under six foot five six foot six you should have no problem sitting in the back of the Grand Highlander. They also cut out this seat in a way that you can fit your knees if you're a taller dude. Map box behind both the front seats, third zone climate control, and heated rear seats as well. USB-C port for both sides, an AC outlet down below as well. The center console, I'm not sure if it's removable, but it doesn't protrude too badly. Yes, it is removable. You simply lift it up right here and it can go away if you want like a little pass through in the center but this little console area has two cup holders you'll fit 30 ounce bottles some cell phones on the side wallet keys and whatnot we get these armrests too nice soft leather vents that blow directly in your face you know how much i like that guys i prefer these heavily over the vents that blow from the console grab handle with a hook on both sides of these back seats and we get led rear lights it's about a rain i'm gonna hop out in the third row hopefully get this test drive done before it really gets too bad. Taking a step out on the third row, this is why you go Grand Highlander over just regular old Highlander is this. I still have at least five, six or four or five inches of knee room. These third row seats recline, USB-C ports, two massive cup holders, a nice spot for your phone, and we get additional air vents that blow directly into your face with some more LED lights. Definitely a thumbs up by me. Headroom, I have about half an inch to an inch because Toyota cut out a nice little slot for taller passengers like me. And we can hop out of here by click pulling this latch up top, pushing forward and taking a step out here. And compared to most full-size SUVs, that's a much easier process. We get a massive window too for the third row so people in the third row don't feel like they're stuck in a cave. Taking a step out here, we'll see how much space is offered back here with the third rows up. And there's quite a bit. We'll see if there's any secret storage down below. Yep, a little bit, not a whole lot, but beneath this you have your spare tire and your cover if you would like to use one or not. We can drop these third row seats down by pushing these latches, the headrests automatically fold down as well. And once we do so, you can see an absolutely massive floor. Even with the second row seats up, I'd expect you to fit up to a 55, 60 inch TV. You fold those second row seats down, I would expect you to fit up to an 85 inch TV. This is a massive, massive cargo space what you see is basically what we get the step in is a little bit high i'm again a little bit over six foot i got like six inches six inches before the step in so if you have older or smaller pets maybe a little bit tougher than to hop back here but other than that this is a super family friendly vehicle massive opening definitely competitive with the full size segment walk around this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited all-wheel drive one more time. It is a really nice SUV. It is large, but the way that it's shaped and designed, it doesn't really feel a lot larger than most mid-size SUVs, at least in the higher range of things. And this is the base power plant, the 2.4 liter all-new turbocharged four-cylinder. And speaking of that, let's take this 2024 Grand Highlander Limited out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited. Four wheel drive, let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. As soon as this guy figures it out, about half throttle, boost. 
feels strong. The shifts happen pretty quickly. A lot snappier than the eight speed we get from say the RAV4 or the Camry. I wish they put these motors into the new Camrys. They probably will. We'll check it out probably next year for 2025. But for now, this I believe is the first application of this 2.4 turbo. And it responds really well. This is just partial throttle about a third of the way, good torque. We'll open her up a little bit more at some point, but for now it feels plenty powerful. Very quiet too as you drive along. We mentioned a dual pane windows. For under $50,000 for the base price, dual pane windows is an impressive feature. You drive over these bumps and you barely feel them, thanks to these beefier 55 series sidewall tires. And with this JBL sound system, we can't test it out for you guys, unfortunately, for copyright purposes, but it is really impressive. It's a well-loaded vehicle for just a limited. Hopefully I can get my hands on the Hybrid Max at some point and really get a comparison. The brakes feel good too. Very sharp bite as soon as you lean into the pedal. As soon as you get the chance, we'll take a step out here, open her up a little bit more, and I'll catch right back with you. All right, guys, on the gas, boost, ooh. Yeah, it continues to pull up top. That's rare with turbocharged motors. I haven't really seen that outside of, say, BMW. It has a pretty good pull in the beginning. The mid-range is very strong, just like most turbos. But up top, that was actually surprising. After about 5,000 RPM, it was almost like it had a second life. And at higher speeds, it's still really quiet. You don't hear any road noise with these Yokohama tires. And the wind noise is just about non-existent with these dual panes. They did a great job refining this vehicle. With the base price, under 50,000 bucks, I was not expecting this much levels of luxury. All right, guys, taking a step out here. About third throttle, good low end punch. And the shifts are snappy. Just keeping up with highway speeds too. It's very easy. Low end punch with this 2.4 turbo. It's impressive. It almost makes you think that you have the hybrid assist here with just how well it responds as soon as you lean into the throttle. The driving dynamics here are surprisingly impressive. Maybe we'll get a chance to try out some twisties, see how the body roll is. Compared to the bigger Sequoia, I would imagine the body roll is a lot more limited, but compared to the regular Highlander, it's probably a little bit more drastic. All right, guys, throwing it in. It's starting to rain a little bit, so we're not going to push it too hard. But the body roll stays limited on the gas. Good pull. And we catch up nice and quickly. So overall, guys, if you're looking for like an entry-level full-size SUV, you're not into full-size SUVs for two main reasons. A, fuel economy, and B, you just don't want to drive something that feels like a massive truck. It's not that this isn't a large vehicle. It's very large. It's competitive with the rest of the full-size segment. But the way Toyota engineered it, it feels so much smaller than it really is. The steering is on center. The throttle is responsive. The brakes bite as soon as you start to press on them. And the overall cabin feels like it's more ergonomic compared to, like, say, an American full-size SUV. Also, you're averaging over 22 MPGs here. You're definitely not doing that in a full-size American SUV. So they're, they're addressing two main issues with the full-size segment. And outside of this vehicle, I really don't think there's anything in the full-size segment, anything like it, outside of, say, for example, a BMW X7, which is going to start $35,000 plus more expensive than what you have here. So if you're looking for a full-size SUV, but you're not into full-size SUVs because of the size and fuel economy, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. And a big thanks to T at Toyota of Tampa Bay for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa Bay area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for T. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. Had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.